Please forgive me. All that I have ruined is what I wrote in a letter four years ago, and which, in retrospect, feels painfully ridiculous. The lyric flourishes absurd, though it isn't like I didn't pony up for all my extra. I took that check for every meal, always ready to confuse the sum that someone wants from me with the balance of myself. My son and I, we've gotten good at being quiet after all those years of someone else's noise. Not unhappy quiet, but better than most at keeping still. It can feel willful at the holidays when half the time I'm left to herd the silence on my own, but mostly we ghost along contentedly through our dailiness. My son says he's convinced if we were predators, we'd dive more silently than barn owls who are extremely silent with feathers notched like steak knives that break the air to make them so. On other days, we are benign, slowly shifting from room to room, more stealthy than giraffes, whom scientists believe emit a non-committal hum, though their experiments can't entirely decide. Most often drowning comes to us like this, so very quietly, while those dithering in the boil forget one, de the, forget one decent option to consider, save yourself. Once my son went under, sneaky-like, right behind my back, when I was lifeguard for his tiny tuna pre-K class. Once he vanished absolutely inside a rack of discount dresses at a giant mall, pretending to hang there like an affordable floral print. He watched me call and call, my terror bursting skyward, all glassy spangle and screech a one woman fireworks display. And because he wasn't obviously damaged, I now take pleasure in the thought of him invisible inside those dearly purchased minutes loosed from this flaming dirigible of my fear, the red balloon unknotted from his waist, which is one kind of message sent by the universe, though typically uneasy to parse like the cassowary at Miami's dumpy zoo, unknown to us before as a thoroughly accomplished killer, nature having furnished it with good sized daggers on its middle toes with which it's more than willing when provoked to unzip the human body like a duffel bag and how its minders came to us before the aviary show since we were closest to the stage instructing us to hold completely still when they brought it out to tuck in our feet and put our hands deep into our pockets. Really, they repeated, completely still. But how I envied it, that mindless dinosaur, caring for nothing but the little gobs of meal its trainer threw at the concrete stage to keep it occupied, how beautifully there, not there, the bird was, complete unto itself, a savage trick I recognize as having once perfected. The truth is, I've lost that gift. In my early dotage, my edge begins to bubble, creeping like the glass in a cathedral. I weep easily at stupid stuff. The truth is, my son only misses the dogs now. The one with eyes like ice in a glass on a bar top, the other unstoppable, who ate a light bulb hole. Theirs was such a loving, faithful chaos. It was a thing of joy for us back then to watch them run.